Welcome to my channel where I go ahead and actually give you my recommendations up front and hopefully you stay tuned to go ahead and actually have me justify why I gave things that rating. So today I'm going to go ahead and actually give you a recommendation for Society of the Snow. Now the way I go ahead and actually rate movies is either it's a must watch, it's a add to your playlist, it's a watch on a lazy day, or avoid it like the plague. So those are the ratings that I go ahead and actually do. For me, first and foremost, for main target audience members, people that are fans of survival, thrillers, disaster films, what have you, this is a must watch. You have to go ahead and actually watch this particular film. For casual viewers where you're not into it, you really don't know, it's a little squishy on there, it's not really your thing or what have you, I'm gonna say you need to add it to your playlist, definitely. Now, hopefully you stay on tune and I'll go and actually justify to you why I gave it those ratings. So let's go ahead and actually jump into Society of the Snow. <laughs> Society of the Snow is a semi-biographical survival film and it premiered on Netflix in January of 2024. It has a runtime of two hours and 15 minutes. Now it stars Enzio Von Granich as Numa Tarkati, Augustin Pardelli as Fernando Parado, and Matthias Reckholt as Roberto Canessa. As always, I apologize because I am not good at pronouncing names. So I've given you those names on there to write them on there, but apologies to anybody that I've mispronounced the names. You know me. But as I go ahead and actually talk about what this movie is, IMDB goes and actually defines as this. The flight of a rugby team crashes on a glacier in the Andes. The few passengers who survive the crash find themselves in one of the world's toughest environments to survive. Now, this movie is an adaptation of a book written by Pablo Versace by the same name. And then there was also a 1993 film called Alive that was based off of a novel uh, by Piers Paul Red. And just to go ahead and actually just be clear about it, if you're a older millennial or older than that, a Gen Xer, boomer, what have you, there's no one that has not heard of the movie Alive and at least knows the basic content of that movie. So this is basically, a, I don't know if you want to say an updated version of that, but this is a different perspective on that same very premise of a movie based off of real life events. Now, I can tell you, I definitely went and actually avoided watching Alive. I have never watched it, primarily because of what the survivors had to do to go ahead and actually survive it was never my thing plus i'm not a big disaster survival type of person those things never really speak to me so i am a casual viewer in this i'm not the target audience for this type of film so with that perspective just kind of keep that in mind that that's my slant going into this because you should always go ahead and actually know your reviewer's perspective when you go ahead and actually take into account these reviews because i like to watch movies that are exclusive to streaming contents not the big wide releases just something that's only exclusive to us on the streaming services to see if it's worth your time i watch it so you don't have to if you like how that sounds do me a favor click like share subscribe and now let's dig deeper into this movie so when i was going ahead and actually doing this particular movie and I saw the trailers about it of course and I read up a little bit about it because I knew some of what it was about and I figured it was going to be a very simple breakdown as far as knowing what is act one act two and act three you know you figure act one would be the introduction of the people who's going to be on the plane all that kind of stuff then act two is going to be kind of like the crash and then act three is you know when they get rescued and you know what happens after that but honestly for me Act two actually comes a little bit later than the crash. And so that in and of itself went ahead and actually propelled this movie to a different level. So that's kind of like my thought process on when I was going and actually reviewing it. So in the first act, it's definitely meant to give us the background of a lot of these characters. And it, it worked for the most part. There's this film really tries very hard to go ahead and actually humanize everybody that was on that plane, give them some type of uh, a line or a picture or something of that nature so that you could go ahead and actually feel for these people, not just the survivors. And so with that, you know, they're trying to go ahead and actually get that intro going, but then get into what we, they know what people are going to be looking for and that is the events that happen on the mountain but i think that i think they did a really good introducing everyone and trying to humanize them as much as possible for us the audience 
Now, when they're going ahead and actually doing that, I think one of the biggest things that this film does, especially in that first act, is give you that sense that, you know, these are young characters. The majority of these passengers are between 18 and 25 years old. And most of them are from, are really in the uh, 18 to like 22 range area, what have you. These are young kids and they're a team, they're friends, they're, they've got some family members on there. They're, they're just trying to really set up about how close they were in the very beginning of this and then kind of what happened to it as far as all that act one really establishes what's going on there and the other thing that i will go and actually tell you that really stands out in act one is the actual crash itself was quick it was visceral and it was just devastating and the way that they went and actually did it i think it was very masterful because they didn't spend too much time on it but they spent enough time that you just you, you knew the impact of that crash right right away and i really appreciate the way that they brought that together now the second act really goes ahead and actually transpires not when the crash happens and that's kind of like their obstacle to, obstacle to get over because even though that definitely was it i think the really part of the second act starts when they figure out or realize that helps not coming that really propels this film into the stratosphere as far as what it is conveying out there for you. What Act 2 really does well and through all this is that it doesn't labor on any one particular point because we go from survivals to discussions to debates to you know the various different emotions to the various different things that happen on a mountain that is just fighting against them as they're trying to survive. In the debates the discussions that go on both internally with these people and externally amongst each other of what's morally right what's philosophically right what's right physically for them to go ahead and actually survive what what should they do what can they do what will they do and so the second act is really labored into going ahead and actually getting you on various different people's sides at one point or another and it really just goes on through it you really go ahead and actually feel it all the way up to the point of them going ahead and actually getting rescued. The third act is obviously the act of them getting rescued. And I will just tell you from the time that they are, uh, that they're aware that they're going to go and actually get rescued all the way to the end credits. I had a little bit of tear in my eye. Um, there is just a lot that is conveyed in this third act that you really see you feel it and they really wanted you to go ahead and actually understand what the survivors ended with that the impact that this was going to have for them for the rest of their lives and going forward okay so that's kind of like the breakdown of the three different acts on there um let me tell you so how did i go ahead and actually break this up obviously first is the storytelling when you go ahead and actually think of storytelling you're thinking about somebody you know coming up with this this and plot points obviously this is a real life event so there's not much story that you have to go ahead and actually make up on there it's just a matter of really how you convey this how you storyboard it and how you pace it out and for me this was done with care so i didn't again i didn't watch the alive movie and that was supposed to be you know pretty good pretty good movie but i think that the, the filmmakers took a lot more care with this uh, i did go ahead and actually read that the uh the author of the book uh, society of of the snow that this is based on it was this uh pablo virtue that was actually a childhood friends with some other survivors of the crash and so he was the one that actually took their accounts and, and wrote this book and things like that on top of that the filmmakers recorded over 100 hours of interview time that they spent with the remaining survivors that they interviewed i believe this was i think they went into production on this right 2012 2013 something of that nature so they recorded all these hours and then the actors spent time talking to the survivors so when i sit there and tell you that they took care and how this was portrayed getting all the, the different vantage points and how this was going to be conveyed where's the pacing at what really did happen the plot points are there for you i don't know if alive went in and actually did that i my presumption is that alive went a little bit more hollywood-esque versus this i think was probably a little bit nitty and grittier just my thought process on that when i go ahead and actually tell you that the the pacing of this was never you never felt the two hours plus that went into this you were just zoned in on god i hope they survive this so with that being said, the way that they pace it out, the care that they put into crafting the story and the pacing and all that kind of good stuff on there, I'm going to go ahead and actually give the story an A. Okay. When I go ahead and actually talk about acting, the here's the thing. 
none of the people in this film I've never seen before. Now, they are foreign actors. You can tell by, you know, a lot of their names and what have you. Uh, from what I saw that these are mostly uh, Uruguay, uh, Uruguay and Argentinian actors. And there's an, uh, a few actresses as well. So they're, you know, not familiar to us in like North America. They were obviously very young. They had to portray young characters, what have you. So you have these uh, foreign actors for North Americans, you have them being young and having to co convey all the various different emotions on there, whether you're talking about hope, despair, uh, loyalty, uh, friendship, strength, ingenuity, all this kind of good stuff on there. And it's so hard to do. They did a phenomenal job conveying that. They made you care about everyone, whether the persons were gone in the very beginning or whether they made it all the way to the end and survived. No matter what their position was, no matter person personality, the characteristics or anything like that, you cared about everyone on there. And that is very hard to do for such a large cast and trying to to give that. And I think they did a phenomenal job in that acting. So for me, acting in this is going to get an A minus. Lastly, for me, are like things that are intangible, things that you just can't quite wrap your hand around. But it's part of the experience of watching a film. So first and foremost, I will go ahead and actually tell you in this particular film. I have never felt so cold watching a film. There's just whew, every time, you know, they're, they're just in this because of the various different things that happen and the breath is coming off of there and the, and the shivering and the makeup and everything that they did on there. There's just, I, I felt like I was there with them. The other thing that you kind of see on there is that the ingenuity of these kids, the instinct to survive and, and try and make things happen was just awesome to go and actually see the fact that they did these types of things, things that I wouldn't have even thought to do or be brave enough to do. They went and actually did that. That was just phenomenal to see. Um, one of the things that is prevalent in here is that they actually shot in uh, Uruguay and Argentina and um, they actually shot on the Andes Mountains on a crash site so you know in the alive one i don't know where they shot at i don't i'm pretty sure it was a little bit more hollywood asking a little bit more favorable to those actors whereas this one um you, you just got to believe that there was just more love and care into where they're feeling this making it more authentic and you felt that it was just whew, man can't tell you now there were some things on here that you know it wasn't all everything was phenomenal with this movie most of, most of it was there were some things that i wouldn't actually question about it um just because i just had questions in my mind i'm sure if i talked to the survivors i would have answers to that and maybe i need to read a bit of things but there was definitely like a lighter that was prevalent through like most of the movie which i'm thinking like how come we don't use that to make fire or why didn't they show that or what have you that wasn't there um frostbite should have been a bigger thing for the people i mean just have it like where you can't feel anything and you don't you can't move uh your fingers and toes and things like that and it didn't seem like that was actually part of what was displayed on there and uh, and it's maybe a little bit of a nitpick, but I think it was just something that I just noticed or, or what have you, things like that. But overall, when I look at the intangibles of everything else that came as far as the setting and how they went to convey various different things, uh, the makeup was impressive, uh, the authentic, authenticity, authenticity of the clothing and things like that. All that was great. So I'm going to go ahead and actually give the intangibles a B plus. Okay. So now you've gotten like kind of all my breakdown here and just getting into exactly how I arrived at the grades that I did. So for again, for main target audience members, like I said, it's a must watch. Everything about this production that there was thought there was carefully crafted. There was excellent execution. The locations, the actors, the prep, the shooting, everything that was done for this movie was top notch. And when you go ahead and actually take that all the way to the very end of the movie in the way that these guys look after the ordeal, you could just tell that they wanted to convey this story in its entirety, in its fullness, and you felt every bit of that. This is a quintessential survival, human survival movie that I think main characters, main target audience members want to see, and thusly, they have to see this. Now, for you casual viewers, I'm going to go and actually say, put it on your playlist. Don't get me wrong. Everything about this production is phenomenal and great. The reason why a casual viewer has to go and actually think about it and put it on that playlist is because we cannot get past the fact that this movie has to go ahead and actually talk about cannibalism in order for them to survive. If you didn't know that before, this is a spoiler, but it is what it is because this is very key to being able to, if you want to, if you can stomach this movie, it's one of the reasons why I didn't want to watch Alive, but I watched this because it was kind of like on a list as far as a lot of movies that are popular and things like that. So really for casual viewers, you really need to go ahead and 
actually figure out if you can morally or philosophically get past that cannibalism. They did not do anything gory with this. Matter of fact, I think they did a very masterful job of being as tasteful as they could about the subject matter, but it definitely gets discussed and it is hashed out and their thought process is all the way through the film on there so that it is not lost that that actually happened or what have you. It's a very big part of the film, but that's probably the biggest hold up why I wouldn't go ahead and actually automatically say you have to go and actually see it for your casual because I understand the apprehensiveness of seeing that. However, this is a kind of movie that I would go ahead and actually put up there with like, for me, Schindler's List, The Passion of the Christ, All Quiet on the Western Front. These are movies that are made very well. They are great as far as how they went to production, how they're acting, everything, all the care that was taken with them. However, they're not made for entertainment value. Therefore, they're really meant to go ahead and actually see the human experience, feel the human emotions on there, discuss it, review it, and then you never want to see it again because they take a toll on your soul. That's how I feel about this kind of movie. So this is an upper echelon type of humanistic film that must be watched so that you can really appreciate that. But that's what I actually have for The Society of the Snow. Now showing on Netflix. Do yourself a favor and check it out. ¿Quiénes fuimos a la montaña? Thank you for staying with me today. I know this movie was heavy, but it was a good one. So hopefully you liked this review. If you did, do me a favor, click like, share it, maybe even subscribe to the channel so I bring you more of these types of reviews. Um, if not, go ahead and actually feel free to watch one of the other uh, videos here that the algorithm thinks that you might like of mine. But until the next time, I'll holla at you. Take care of yourself.